we kind of understood that it's the observer who create the reality to balance the homeostasis condition okay so without or in a balanced stage the observer is contented with itself okay when the observation of the observer tend to disturb or create uh, instability then there is a new reality created about the world around the observer that is the idea then everything shifts to observer or to the observation since observer is neutral so we have to get into the observation idea to define a personality for every person who is okay so what is an observation what are the types of observation and what the yoga talks about the definition or structure of observer observations okay let's take a look in normal social sciences observation is participant observation and a non participant observation the observer acting part of the group that he is watching or or discussing or hearing too is going to be the participant observation kind and the non participant may be from the outside the experimenter does not be part of that observation okay or become part of the group that he is observe he or she is observing okay another option here is uh, the observer and his observation can be divided into two more types naturalistic observation or a controlled observation okay the controlled observation maybe it could be like a group discussion maybe a meeting point between the ceo and other things other teammates etc or a classroom teacher and a student in a natural situation it is like people talking extemporaneously or uh, without any inhibition it's going to be like in a park maybe in a um, public place or maybe in a supermarket etc okay maybe in a relatives function um maybe a ceremony or it could be like um, a marriage hall etc okay where the lateral natural um interactions are going to be non controlled that's naturalistic observation okay how the yoga sutras of patanjali define this structure of observation patanjali's yoga sutras has a beautiful behavioral science okay as well as psychological science in there okay we will take a look into how that unfolds or structures our thought process there patanjali says there are f- five types of riddhis what is meant by riddhi it could be loosely translated as mental modification or etc okay that it's in right psychological sense it's called observations when an observer tend to uh, observe a interaction or a relationship or a transaction it only happens through these five methods because the moment the observer interprets it it's only it gets tainted or it gets colored or it gets through a lens filter the limitation as we can say in this five kind of patterns or it could be methods or whatever like similar terms both all this five falls into two colored one like klishta or a klishta maybe it is um, sometimes it looks like it's favorable in other times it could be uh, non favorable okay it's called klishta favorable or klishta non favorable maybe a doctor likes uh, somebody is sick but if it happens to be his own kid he doesn't like that idea so it is uh, what do you call interest conflict could also bring in klishta eklishta 
so don't get into the uh, one pattern alone in this five types that is described the five vrittis are pramana viparyaya vikalpa nidra and smriti okay with this in mind we have to remember the yoga creates a term for observer framework as chitta chittam is predominantly translated as mind mind etc but i we don't want to go uh, let's keep the word chitta is a kind of observer framework okay so from there when we see what is the vriddhi or the five components of the vriddhi we can say very easily the pramana is roughly equivalent to cognition valid cognitions could be pratyaksha anumana etc that is whatever we see as a matter of fact or from our own because the moment say we matter of fact whatever we see is interpreted internally so the my matter of fact is decided by my limitation or understanding or pre existing knowledge okay so we cannot say that is matter of fact it has to be given with all the disclaimers that's why pram pramana is going to be a equivalent to cognition viparyaya is misinterpretation vikalpa is more informational ideology nidra is little bit of a delusional or illusional idea with respect to physical sense but delusional is for the mental perception and everything is based on the smriti which is episodic or semantic memory process we all uh, first create the image of all the transaction that we are talking about right so we see that as a ship that means before that we have been given the nama rupa or information about this is what is called a ship and this is um, the picture of it then the moment we see the picture we understand it is a ship okay so that is what is pramana the pramana depends on the smriti okay in between these three things we predominantly rely or reside or transact on viparyaya level that's mean to misinterpretation level we will get to that little later okay vikalpa is all about sound informational you get to read about it a uh, mars is red in color oh okay i understand that or the milky way is so big and we are even the corner okay we get into that likewise we come down you have a heart that is beating you cannot see your heart that is beating we yeah i we believe that it's vikalpa okay we cannot have all the you have a brain or i have a brain it's also informational or it could come under pramana pramana says okay i have a brain uh, it go, everything else uh, situationally or uh, as per the documentation or uh, as per the research i understand i should be having a brain so that i can talk okay um i cannot take it out to prove that that's the point here okay with that we'll get to the end but in a little bit we touch base on nidra is a little bit delusional means um, um we kind of are all dilemmatic or we don't know which is right or which is wrong sometimes uh, uh, this look like that or uh, it's a more as a dream state nidra is predominantly equivalent to dream state but uh, we call it equal and stage like um, delusional when we have a dilemma of deciding what way to what way to decide or perceive that okay with that in mind we will in short say a personality is defined with these five riddhis or the limitation of the observation okay how big the limitation depends on the five vrittis the how much of knowledge acquired decides the our ability for to say what we see is how much is is it perfect okay or how much it is going to be interpretational or informational everything okay this five vrittis will decide the personality in the due course bye for now